Hello photographers, I'm going to show you how to shoot in manual mode with the Nikon D3400. Now, regardless of what Nikon camera you have, if you have a lens with a lock on it, the first thing you need to do is unlock the lens. If you don't, when you turn on the camera, you're going to get this message right here, which says before taking photos, rotate the zoom ring to extend the lens. The next thing I want to show you is how to customize this info screen that we're looking at right here, because to me, this info screen as it is, is kind of confusing. So to customize this, we're going to go into the menu and in the menu here, I'm currently in the playback menu. We need to get down to the wrench menu. So I'm going to arrow over to the left and then arrow down to get to the wrench. And it's on the first page here. What we want is the info display format. So I'm going to go into this menu and then into the PSAM options because this is where you want to see your information as clearly as possible. Now there's a bunch of different options here. The default, which has this sort of visual uh, way of trying to show you what's happening with the camera. On the left, you have the shutter speed. In the middle, you have the aperture. And on the right, you have the ISO. And this is sort of meant to kind of try to visually represent what's happening with the camera when you change your settings. And if that's helpful to you, that's fine. I personally prefer this option right here, which is clean and just shows you the numbers for the information you are trying to see. So that's the one that I'm going to use. But again, you can use whichever one you want. So now that we have that set, let's look at how to change the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed while in manual mode. Those are the three most important settings to be able to change because they control the exposure of your photo, which is how much light you capture. And what ISO, aperture, and shutter speed you happen to use will affect how your photo looks. So first, of course, make sure that you're actually in manual mode on your camera dial. And we're going to start with the ISO, which shows on this screen in the bottom middle of the screen. Now, by default, this function button on the left side of the camera is actually programmed to change your ISO for you. So this is a customizable button, but I recommend leaving it set to change your ISO because when in manual mode, you want quick access to your ISO setting. So in order to change it, you just press and hold down the button. And notice when I do that, the other settings all go gray on the screen and then just the ISO is highlighted. And then you spin the dial on the back of the camera while holding down the button on the side. So you need to hold this button and then spin the rear one in order to change your ISO sensitivity. And if you're not familiar with the ISO or these other camera functions, check out this playlist right here, which explains how your camera works, how ISO aperture and shutter speed works and how to use those to control how your picture looks. So after changing your ISO, I'm going to show you how to change your aperture. And your aperture also requires you to hold down a button while spinning the back dial. And the button you're going to hold down is this button right here. But it functions dually depending upon the mode that you are shooting in. When shooting in manual mode, the specific function of this button is to enable you to change your aperture. And that's indicated by this little aperture symbol that's printed on the side. You can see this plus minus symbol which actually refers to exposure compensation, which is a function you will use in different modes on the camera. So in order to change your aperture, you're going to press and hold this button down and then spin the rear dial. And when you do, you'll notice that F number changing on the back of the screen. The F number represents your aperture setting or your aperture number. And when you spin your dial to the right, it makes that number bigger. And when you spin it to the left, it makes that number smaller. Finally, the easiest one to change is your shutter speed because your shutter speed, you just spin this dial on the back of the camera. You don't have to press or hold any buttons at all. You just spin the dial and you can see that shutter speed changing. And the shutter speed is a measurement of time. It's how long the shutter is open, exposing the camera sensor to light. Now the ISO aperture and shutter speed are not the only settings that you're going to want to change while in manual mode. And if you look at this display on the back of the camera, you'll see that we actually have a number of other settings down below that we can see, but right now we can't actually change. But we can very quickly and easily change them if we want to. All you have to do in order to access those functions is press this I button right here on the back of the camera. When you press that, it activates the menu and it allows you to change things like the quality, the white balance setting. So if you want to change white balance, you go into here and then you can choose a white balance that is appropriate for the lighting conditions that you are shooting in. And these are very self-explanatory. You would use the incandescent setting when you were shooting with incandescent light bulbs. 
you would use the fluorescent setting if you're shooting fluorescent lights, sun for sunlight, and then you've got flash down here, you've got cloudy, you've got shade, and then you've got preset, which is a manual white balance, which I'll explain in a separate video. So if you hit the I button, that takes us back to that main menu, and I'm going to reset the white balance back to auto. Don't worry about ADL, active deed lighting. You can also change your ISO from here if you don't want to use the function button on the side. You have the exposure compensation option, which you're not going to use in manual mode. This is flash exposure compensation, which you're never going to use if you don't have a flash on the camera. So if you're not using flash, don't ever worry about that particular function. This is your picture control, which you also don't need to worry about. The other settings you would be most interested in in manual mode are these three right here. So after white balance, we're looking at the AFS, which should be familiar to you because we set this when we were customizing the setup of the camera. This is your focus mode. And what this means is you don't have to go into the menu system to change your focus mode. You can just do it very quickly from this info screen on the back of the camera. So if you're going from shooting still subjects to shooting moving subjects, you can switch over to AFC, or if you want to manually focus and you can switch over to manual focus. And then this here is the AF area mode. And again, remember, this is the difference between being able to set your focus points or letting the camera choose the focus points for you. And when shooting an AFS, which is the single point focus where you lock focus when you press the shutter button down, you want to use that single point focus mode. If you have this set to continuous focus, then when you go into the focus point selection, you have the tracking focus point selection options available to you you as well. Finally, you have your metering mode. And the D3400 has three different metering modes. You have matrix or evaluative metering, then you have center weighted metering, and you have spot metering. And if you want to learn about the different metering modes and how they work, check out this playlist right here. Now, the very last thing you want to be able to change is your focus point. Because remember, we set this to single point mode. And if you look at the focus point grid on the back of the camera, you can see that by default, the center focus point is active. Changing the focus point is very, very easy because we've already set it to single focus point mode. All you need to do is use your directional pads to move the focus point around. And you can see the icon moving on the back of the camera. You can also see this in your viewfinder. If you're looking through the viewfinder, the red dot will illuminate the focus point that you are choosing. And again, if you want to learn how to shoot in manual mode, check out the videos in the playlist in the card, and it will teach you all about ISO aperture shutter speed and all of these other functions and how they help you take amazing photos. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the priority modes on the D3400.